All right, we're finally to the end of the customer nicheonomics section. And I think it's fair to ask whether we've addressed these questions or highlighted these key points. And my first question is, are most distributors guilty of selling too many niches uh, with too few service models and generic service metrics for all? And I think the answer is yes. And the solution is to uh, think in terms of customer nicheonomics. Uh, but where should we start? Any given location, distribution location should say, well, first of all, I have to figure out what my historic core niche is. Accidentally, what is my highest net profit uh, niche? And, and how can I renew that and maybe double the volume and quadruple the profits? To renew it, though, I'm going to have to go out and do a deeper level understanding of what the service value equation is. And to do that, I've got to go out and you know visit with my five sort of core best customers in the niche who approximate, represent the rest of them. And, and together, I'm going to redefine it. And then, then I've got to make it happen. I've got to measure, achieve it, sell it, get paid for it. And then I can ultimately partner with it. But this whole part of achieving Measuring, selling, getting paid for will be covered. The, 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 the specific how-tos will be covered in, in later video clips. But right away, there's no reason that we can't do this point, which is to say for the five core and the five targets accounts, make sure that every employee knows them by heart and is empowered to say yes to whatever the question, the issue, the problem, the unusual circumstance is. And on top of that, we can offer basic service brilliance unconditionally guaranteed. We may only offer it for 20, 30, 60, 100 accounts, but, but certainly we can order uh, offer it as an extra icing on the cake value prop for the five core and the five targets because we now know from line item profit analytics the power laws are much more powerful for 10 customers or generate 110% of the, the, the PBIT for the branch and could double that for example, potentially. Uh, we also will find out that because we've, we're guilty of old school uh, product centric pushing, getting more sales and the way you get more sales and margin dollars is you sell more customers and the customers may be smaller, 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 further, further away, but look at the margin percent confusing margin percent with net profit, which isn't the case. As a general rule, the higher the margin percent, um, the more money we're losing from a cost to serve viewpoint. So we realized that, gee, we, we have too many rep call, calling on BNC accounts. We have chronic small customers for which are over service enter pricing. Uh, we want our very best reps on the five by five, five by five accounts. And these are exhibit Back up, backstop references that you can go to my website to read all you want. But this all adds up to the DER, which is sort of summarized in Article 4.11, which is downsizing, upgrading, re-educating, because we're going to be service, fa service value solution providers now, refocusing on core high leverage accounts in our number one niche, number two niche, and recompensating, paying now on Delta PBIT for improving and developing operating profit as opposed to going after margin dollars where the cost to serve may be higher than the margin dollars. So those are, are um, and we talked a little bit about how to switch to this net profit plan, but we'll look at that in, in greater detail in the, 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 the in deep section on uh, line item profit analytics. So uh, those are some of the summary steps. I'm going to stop now. Thank you very much, and I'll continue in the next clip. Thank you.